Welcome back. Wednesday's mid-morning show on LMFM. Joined in studio now by Lisa Finn Carroll and Deirdre Byrne Dunn. And they're just two of the seven Irish women who swam the English Channel last month, 7th of July, in fact. Uh, I'm also joined by Leanne Soren, who is their interpreter, because both the ladies who are in studio this morning and the other five who swam on the 7th of July, the English Channel, are all deaf. And they belong to a group called the Irish Deaf Women's Group. Ladies, you're very, very welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thanks very much. Can I start with you, Deirdre? Tell me more about the IDWG, the Irish Deaf Women's Group. So the Irish Deaf Women's Group, they were set up in 1992 by Susan O'Reilly. Now, she herself decided to set up the Irish Deaf Women's Group because there's an awful lot of women all over Ireland, Irish Deaf women, that are isolated and living um, outside of Dublin and haven't got the access to information. So that's the reason for setting up this, uh, this organisation themselves. And Lisa and Deirdre, were you both born deaf? Yes, yes, both of us were born deaf. Deirdre, I think you have seven children. Two of your children are deaf, were born deaf. Yep, two of, of the seven children were born deaf. And they are actually the fourth generation of deaf children that we have on my husband, husband's side of the family that are deaf themselves. How many deaf people are there in Ireland? There's 5,000 deaf people all over Ireland. Lisa Finn Carroll, tell me about the Channel Swim in July. We went to Dover at the end of June and we were hoping to swim by the 3rd of July. And it was about, it, we had about 30 supporters that actually came with us over to Dover. And we got a text from the, the, the boat themselves and they said that it was cancelled because of the weather. So we were, we were very down and we were very upset about this. But then by the weekend, we got a text again saying that we could swim the following Monday, which was the 7th of July, which was great. Um, and I think it was about five o'clock in the morning when we started swimming on the 7th. Um, 7 a.m. actually to be exact and we continued on straight for for 14 hours how did you hear about the swim Well, really, it was Bernadette White, one one of the swimmers. Um, her father, she, he said, "You should be able, you should be well able to do this swim." Um, and then for years and years, she had been thinking about this swim, and she decided last it was in 2012 that she wanted to to go ahead and do it. But she found a couple of women, including myself and Deirdre, that were that were well interested in in doing the swim as well. And so we met in the Deaf Village, Ireland in 2012 and we decided that we were going to go ahead with the swim but the money that we would raise would go to the Irish Deaf Women's Group. Yes, it was a fundraising exercise and well done. We'll find out a little bit later on how much money was raised at a special event later on this year. Can I stay with you girls? Are you both interested in swimming? Is it something you enjoy doing every day, every week? Well, really, I myself, I'm not a competitive swimmer. I'm well able to swim, but the other five, five swimmers? The other five deaf swimmers, they um, swam competitively before. Uh, like, I would find swimming in a pool would be very boring, but I actually prefer swimming in the sea. That was where I, we were extremely interested, not just myself, but the other deaf swimmers. And we swam all year round and we swam in all types of weather, you know, rain, hail, sleet or snow, you know yourself. Um, we swam through that and definitely, no, the, the sea was definitely where we had our interest. That's Lisa. What about you, Deirdre? Well, 
I myself at the start, I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know how this was going to go. But by the end of it, I couldn't believe that we were able to achieve this. This was just something really amazing. And that was, it, yeah, it was fantastic. And we had a great team, a great team of seven seven women and uh, the supporters that we had from the deaf community you know we couldn't believe how much support we actually got there as well was the first time that irish women f- seven deaf irish women swam the english channel a distance of about 35k from dover to calais Yep, yep, the first time in history, that well, the first time that we know of in history of Irish deaf women all around the world, not just here in Ireland, but all around the world, to have ever decided to do this. Now, you're communicating with me today through Leanne Sorn. You're, you're actually signing. Uh, was this something you, you had to learn when you were very, very young? Well, Irish Sign Language is actually our first language. And at the moment, the government, they won't recognise Irish Sign Language as an official language here. So the deaf community are really struggling to get access to different services and uh, to, to be a proper uh, citizen here in, in Irish society. How many deaf people are there in Ireland? 5,000. 5,000. And the money that you raised from this fundraising swim in July, it'll go towards what? Well, we raised the money for the Irish Deaf Women's Group because it's a non-profit organisation. Like the, the the only funding they ever get is from fundraising. They, they don't get any support from the government. So we use this money to um, to in, boost confidence in the Irish deaf women. Um, we provide workshops, we provide training, and other services. So we hope to set up an awful lot more workshops now all over Ireland for deaf women that would be living in isolated areas. I've been talking to a number of blind people over over the last 10, 15 years of the radio programme and they tell me that when they go to sleep and dream that they sometimes dream that they can see. Do, 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 does Lisa and Deirdre, do, 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 you, do you often dream of being able to speak? No, no. Uh, both both of them are saying this, Lisa and Deirdre. They're saying, no, both of us, we, uh, we've we never had that sort of a dream where we're actually... And Lisa's just saying, I'm I'm very happy to be born deaf. Um, it, one, there's just, a, just the one problem I've had throughout life is getting access and breaking, breaking down barriers. Like, there's, there's no, there's no jobs, there's no communication. It, when we want to actually go in um, to, to different services, we, we haven't got the, we haven't got the access there. Do you feel then as if you are treated as a second class citizen then? Yes, 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 it, it, very, very much so. And that would I can see the problem, even if you went into a post office looking for a 68 cent stamp, it, that could prove, a simple matter of buying a stamp could prove very, very difficult for you. Yeah, yeah, and it's the same, you know, um, go at bus fares, bus fares is the exact same. If we get onto the bus and we're saying one 175, but they give me a ticket and it's 105, um, just things like that. You'd be breaking out in a sweat knowing that you have to go in uh, and try to communicate back and forth with people and they can't understand. Well, thank you both for coming in. Uh, one last question. If you could change one thing in Irish society for the deaf community, what would it be? To officially recognise Irish Sign Language. To officially recognise Irish Sign Language. Lisa Finn Carroll, Deirdre Byrne Dunn.
and Leanne Sorahan, your interpreter, thank you very, very much indeed for joining us this morning. Thanks very much.